good morning. Um, welcome back to classics in total synthesis uh, lecture series. And uh, we have been talking about total synthesis of natural products having six number ring. So we spoke about total synthesis of Langevin in the last lecture. So today we will continue our discussion on uh, total synthesis of few more natural products. Um, particularly today we talk about total synthesis of one interesting natural product called carpenone. So this carpenone was uh, isolated from the bark of carpenone tree and as you can see from the structure it has uh, three six membered rings one, two, three and one aromatic ring and of course you have two five membered rings. Okay. So it poses uh, enough synthetic challenge and it also has five contiguous asymmetric centers. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there are 5 contiguous asymmetric centers. But there was very interesting total synthesis reported by Chapman and this involved two key reactions, uh, one is intramolecular Diels cell reaction, so other one is an oxidative coupling reaction. So this was reported in 1971 and when you look at this molecule you can see at least there are two double bonds in a cyclohexene ring. Okay. So whenever you have a six membered ring with a double bond then one reaction which should come to your mind is Diels salt reaction. See for example if you look at this molecule you can see there is one double bond here that one can think of being constructed using a Diels salt reaction. There is another one here, so 1, 2, this also in principle can be thought of being made through diels salt reaction. There is one more double bond okay, which you cannot see properly as a part of uh, cyclohexene, but this is part of an aromatic ring, but that also can be thought of as uh, a double bond which could be formed as a result of diels salt reaction. But here in this case it should be formed as a result of hetero diels salt reaction. So now let us see intramolecular diels salt reaction could be successfully used in this uh, total synthesis. For example, if we have to make this double bond using intramolecular diels salt reaction. Okay what should be the precursor. Likewise, if you have to make this double bond using intramolecular diels cell reaction, what should be the precursor? And the third option is this. Okay. Now let us see each double bond and how they can be made using the key intramolecular diels cell reaction or what should be the precursor for making these three then we will choose the right one. Of course, it should be followed by oxidative phenolic coupling. This is what Chapman has proposed. First option A, if you want this double bond to be made using intramolecular diels salt reaction, what should be the precursor? The precursor should be this one. And what you can see here, you have a diene, in that diene, one of the double bond is part of ketene. As you know, ketene is unstable. And second difficulty is you have a cyclic allene, a six number cyclic allene, almost very difficult to make. So, this disconnection leads to highly unstable precursor. Okay. So, option A could be ruled out. Now, let us see option B. So, option B you want to make this double bond using intramolecular diels salt reaction. So then what should be the precursor? Your precursor should be this. Okay. It is still possible, but maybe the precursor to this train may not be that easy. Okay. So let us look at option C and then see whether that will be easy to make. So for example, if you use or if you think about 
this double bond being made by intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction. Then what you expect is this precursor. So now if you look at this precursor, one can also further visualize, first of all it can undergo intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction and during that process this ring gets aromatized. Okay. So that is the driving force. Second, as you have seen here, if you break this one, that can lead to a symmetrical alcohol, symmetrical phenol. Okay. This symmetrical phenol can undergo oxidative phenolic coupling that will give you this intermediate which spontaneously can undergo an intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction to form carbonyl. So what should be the starting material? The starting material is this carbon. Okay. So before we actually go into the details of the total synthesis of carbonone by Chapman, let us briefly discuss the two key reactions which are being used to synthesize carbonone. The first one is the intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction. See normally when you talk about Diels-Alder reaction, there are two types of Diels-Alder reaction. One is intermolecular Diels-Alder reaction. See this intermolecular Diels-Alder reaction is the most common one you will see and there are many intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction which, which can give more rings. Okay. When you talk about intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction, they are mentioned as IMDA, intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction, say they write IMDA. And again this IMDA is of two types, one is type 1, the other one is type 2. So what is type 1? Type 1 intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction means you have the dienophile attached to carbon number 1 of the diene. See if you look at this diene, if you look at this diene, you start numbering from here 1, 2, 3, 4. Now the dienophile, if this is attached to carbon number 1, if this is attached to carbon number 1, then this intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction is called IMDA type 1 okay, because it is attached to carbon number 1. So that normally gives a fused bicyclic system. Okay. That normally upon intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction gives fused bicyclic system. Whereas the type 2 where your dienophile is attached to carbon number 2. Okay, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4. Now your dienophile is attached to carbon number 2. This preferably and most likely gives bridged bicyclic system. Okay, this gives bridged bicyclic system. And if you look at this, to form the bridged bicyclic system, you should have minimum 7 membered ring. So, this will be always 6 membered ring, isn't it? 4 plus 2 cycloaddition will give 6 membered ring. But the ring size of the other ring which is going to be formed should be minimum 7 membered ring, then only type 2 IMDA Diels-Alder reaction will work. Now, the reaction which we thought about or which Chapman used in the synthesis of carbonone is type 1 IMDA reaction because that gives fused bicyclic system. The other key reaction which he used is pinnacle coupling which I will come to that later. later. So for IMDA type 1, I am giving couple of examples. So you can see it is type 1 because the, the whole dienophile unit is attached to carbon number 1 that undergoes intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction to give this fused bicyclic system. And this is another complicated system but that also you can see the dienophile is attached to carbon number 1. So this also should give the fused system. Whereas type 2 is where you have the dienophile attached to carbon number 2. So you can see here 1, 2. The dienophile is attached to carbon number 2. So that will give you the bridged bicyclic system. Okay. This is a classical example where you form this tricyclic system using an intramolecular type 2 Diels-Alder reaction. Again here in this example you see 
1, 2. So, at carbon number 2 of the diene, your dienophile is attached. So, that gives the bridged bicyclic system. So, now what you have to look at is the ring size being formed as a result of this IMDA type 2 reaction. Obviously, one ring will be 6 member ring because this intramolecular gill cell reaction 4 plus 2 should give 6 member ring, but you should calculate the ring size. You should see the ring size of the other ring which is formed. So, now if you look at this, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. As I said, minimum 7 member ring should be formed, then only IMDA type 2 is possible. So, here is 8 member ring. And in this example, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Again, this is 8 member ring and this 8 member ring could be successfully formed using IMDA type 2 reaction. Normally, 8 member rings are little difficult to form, but using this IMDA type 2, one can easily make the 8 member ring. The second key reaction is the oxidative phenolic coupling. In fact, many biosynthesis involves uh, this type of oxidative coupling reaction and Derek Barton has proposed that uh, many benzyl isoquinolines are converted into morphine alkaloids through this oxidative phenolic coupling reaction. Okay, so, what happens? You take a phenol, so under this condition, it forms this O radical. The O radical can tautomerize and then you can get this ketone and this allylic radical. Okay, now, these two can combine, okay, one possibility and other possibility is the same thing can combine. Okay. So, like this coupling reaction leads to the formation of dimerization. Okay. So, I will give one example where how this oxidative phenolic coupling took place and what are the products possible. For example, if you take 2 naphthol and then treat with ferric chloride. As you know, this is one of the key reactions which is done in ton scale to form binols. Okay. And if you use further oxidation with potassium ferricyanide, so then it can form this bond. Okay. This is again through radical and then coupling reaction and it can also form to the other side. So, this type of oxidative phenolic coupling is known and Chapman has cleverly used a combination of oxidative phenolic coupling and intramolecular type 1 diel salt reaction as key reactions to synthesize carbono. Let us see. The starting material where you need uh, the double bond, uh, trans double bond was made from this phenol. The first step was allylation uh, with potassium carbonate and allyl bromide. You introduce the allyl group. Now, what you need is the double bond should be isomerized. So, now it is a terminal double bond. The double bond should go inside. That should be internal double bond as well as, you know, uh, it should be at this carbon. Okay. Two things we have to do. One, this double bond has to go inside and that should be at the adjacent carbon. So, the transfer of this allyl group to here can be easily done using Claisen rearrangement. Okay, so you just take it and heat it uh, at a very high temperature, maybe about 200. So one can easily get this Claisen rearrangement product. Now still the double bond is in the terminal position. So what you need, the double bond should go here. So that is done using potassium tertiary butoxide and DMSO. So you treat with base, strong base, so like potassium tertiary butoxide can generate and isomerize the double bond and isomerization takes place to get the trans alkene. So, the starting material is ready. Next key step is the phenolic coupling. So, this phenolic coupling was best done with palladium chloride. So, the palladium chloride, it forms uh, this dimer and once this dimer is formed, so it can undergo, you know, the di radical and then the di radical will come and like this it will come and the same way it will come and then it will dimerize. While dimerizing, these two methyl groups will be trans to each other. Okay. These two methyl groups will be trans to each other. Okay. So, now you can see that this is C2 symmetric compound and if you rotate this CC bond, if you rotate this bond like this, 
okay, what will happen? You will get this particular intermediate. When you look at this particular intermediate, you can see as originally planned by Chapman, you can see a, a diene, this is a heterodyne. You have oxygen as one of the atoms. Okay. You have oxygen as one of the atoms of the diene. So, this is a heterodyl sol reaction where hetero atom is present in the diene and that undergoes an intramolecular type 1 heterodyl sol reaction straight away to give carbon. Okay. So, basically from commercially available starting material, from commercially available starting material, carbonone was synthesized by Chapman in 1971 through what one can call it as biomimetic route. So, very elegant biomimetic synthesis of carbonone was reported and his synthesis basically involved four steps starting from the corresponding phenol and the key steps are oxidative phenolic coupling and intramolecular cycloaddition reaction. And the overall yield was close to 50 percent. You know, you can imagine uh, getting this compound natural product in 50 percent is really outstanding accomplishment. Okay. The second synthesis of carbonone, uh, I will discuss is about uh, Matsumoto synthesis. He also used the same intermediate. The only difference is in the case of Chapman, he used palladium. Here, he used a saline complex. Okay. So, the saline complex and this gave the directly the natural product, not only the oxidative coupling took place but also the diel sol reaction. So, he started from this phenol which was already reported by Chapman. So, now he used molecular oxygen in the presence of a catalyst that gave directly carbonyl in one step. Okay. So, what he did? He took oxygen and cobalt to saline complex and that gives the radical. So, that radical migrates and you get this allyl radical that spontaneously undergoes dimerization. So, it does not give the cis isomer, it gives only the, the trans isomer and the trans isomer as soon as it is formed, it undergoes intramolecular suprafacial 4 pi plus 2 pi cycloaddition reaction to eat carbon in one step from the starting material which was already reported by Chapman. Okay. So, if you look at this synthesis, this is uh, really a very elegant synthesis and this was obtained in 90 percent in a single step from the intermediate reported by Chapman. Okay. So, I will stop here and then uh, I will discuss about uh, one more natural product uh, called mevinolin um, in the next class which is a very, very interesting and complex natural product and uh, that was the key starting point for making several you know cholesterol lowering drugs. See you next week. Thank you.